Hi, this is a lecture on Euclidean lattices as part of our module on lattice-based cryptography, which is really focused on LWE and module LWE. So here we present some uh, very basic properties of lattices that help us understand the connection between module LWE uh, and in particular the attacks against module LWE and lattices. So what is a lattice? Given uh, some linearly independent vectors of R to the N, a lattice defined by those vectors are the uh, integer linear combinations of all these vectors. So you can think of it as a vector space where we've replaced the field uh, by Z. Or in, for mathematical, more mathematical terms, it's a Z module. So for example, for N equals two, and v1 is 1, 1, and v2 is 1, 2. So these are two linearly independent vectors. Uh, we can have, uh, so the, 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 the lattice that is defined by v1 and v2 contains the vector v2 minus v1, which is 0, 1. It also contains the vector v1 minus uh, that newly created vector 0, 1, which gives you 1, 0. And every linear combinations of 0, 1, and 1, 0 uh, which gives you basically uh, all vectors of Z2. So we have ourselves uh, the unit lattice here. Um, usually uh, what we, uh, the way we represent lattices, at least uh, in dimensions that allow us to uh, uh, give a visual uh, representation, is by uh, identifying the lattice vectors by points. So all the dark, all the dark dots here uh, are lattice points. <clears throat> of uh, the lattice that is generated by V1 and V2, okay? Uh, a, base, uh, a basis of a lattice is usually uh, represented by matrix, much like uh, uh, the uh, use of base of matrices that we saw in our recap on linear algebra. So assume that we have a, a basis of a lattice given by M linearly independent vectors of R to the N. The basis, uh, sorry, the matrix of this basis is the matrix that contains the basis vectors as columns. And to express uh, one, uh, to, to express a linear combination of these uh, basis vectors, then we have a uh, matrix vector product with the vector, so between that basis, uh, uh, the matrix of the basis and the vector that represents the coordinates. So for example, in our uh, uh, Euclidean lattice that we uh, defined previously, uh, the basis is 1, 1, and 1, 2, and then the vector v2 minus v1 is, uh, can be uh, expressed as the product between the basis, the matrix of the basis, and the vector minus 1, 1. Now, next, we need to define the fundamental domain of a, of a lattice. So given, uh, uh, so given a basis of a lattice, the fundament, so the first, the fundamental paralepipedic is the um, all the uh, linear combination of uh, the ve uh, vectors uh, uh, multiplied by coefficients between zero and one. And then a fundamental domain is a translation uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, fundamental paradipedic defined by the basis. So it contains only one lattice point uh, and so it's really uh, um, a maximal uh, with that uh, 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 has maximal uh, size with respect to this property. So for example, um, let's say we have v1 is 1 0 and v2 is 0 2, then the fundamental domain is going to be the 1 by 2 rectangle. okay? Now the volume of the lattice relates to that notion of fundamental domain because it's the volume of one of the fundamental domains of the lattice. So uh, if we have a basis uh, of L, then the, front, then the volume of the lattice is going to be the square root of the determinant of the matrix trans the product of uh, the matrix uh, transpose uh, times that itself, where M is the matrix of a basis. Now that's for the most general case, but of course this simplifies greatly when we have uh, the case of uh, a lattice whose dimension is n. So a lattice of R to the n of dimension n is represented by a square matrix. In that case, all we have is the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix. But in general, 
we can represent a lattice with a rectangular basis. And in this case, the determinant of that rectangular basis, of course, uh, uh, rectangular matrix is not defined, but the determinant of that matrix, matrix product is defined because this is a square. So for example, here in the, so in the example, in the simple case of square matrices, if V1 is one zero and V2 is zero two, we just said that we had a one by two rectangle. So the area, the surface area of the volume. So the volume is the surface area in this case, and that's two. And that's also the determinant of the matrix one zero zero two. So it generalizes the two dimensional surface area and the three dimensional volume as we know of, as we know them. Now, very important, a very important uh, invariant of the lattice is uh, its minimum distance. So the minimum distance uh, of a lattice is the minimum distance between two of its points that are, dis that are distinct. Um, so for example, here, uh, and that's very easy to see in dimension two, but it becomes hard to find in high dimension. So here we see the distance between those two points, for example, is the minimum distance. Now it turns out that by linearity, the minimum distance of a lattice is also the length of the shortest non-zero vector of the lattice. So uh, here, for example, uh, this vector is the, the sh one of the shortest uh, uh, non-zero vectors. And so uh, its length is the minimum distance. So finding really the, the minimum distance or uh, the shortest non-zero vector of a lattice is a very difficult problem uh, in general. It look, doesn't look like that uh, in dimension two, but it really is a hard problem in high dimension. Now, next, we want to offer certain bounds on, on the, 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 the minimum distance and uh, also uh, other length of short vectors in the lattice. So for this, we need to work our way towards Minkowski's theorems, and which we start with Litchfeld's theorem, which states the following. Assume that we have a lattice defined by vectors vi and uh, a certain set s and the span, so remember the span from our recap on linear algebra, the span of uh, those uh, VIs. If the volume of S is bigger than the volume of the lattice, then there must be two elements in S such that their difference is in the lattice. Now, uh, this is a visual interpretation. So here we have in gray uh, our um, set S, and uh, here we have uh, Z2 and Z1, and the difference of between those two points is in our uh, lattice. And the goal really of this is to pave the way for Minkowski's theorem, okay? So we really see that, this very important lemma, we really see that as a, a step towards Minkowski. So uh, let's give an idea of the proof of this uh, uh, statement. So here's our fundamental parallel pipette. Uh, now, it turns out, uh, translations of this um, a fundamental power piped by a lattice, lattice points uh, give us a tiling of the entire space. Okay, so we have a partition of the span of V1, Vm uh, as uh, uh, by sets of the form V plus that fundamental power piped where V uh, are lattice points. Now let's put uh, our uh, set S back in the picture. Uh, we have, so we can define S sub V where V is a lattice point as S intersected by uh, this V plus D zero. So here, for example, uh, this is S interse uh, intersected with uh, this particular uh, uh, fundamental domain. And then of course, you know, I could have, could use this, this, and it turns out, uh, so uh, S is a uh, disjoint union of the S sub Vs, okay? So here what you have is we have all of S and we have this particular S sub V, then we have this S sub V, this S sub V, this S sub V, and then all the others are empty, right? Because uh, S intersected with other V plus D zero where V is here or V is here, this is all gonna be the empty set. So all in all, we have a partition of S. So uh, let me disappear to uh, give space for the proof. Now, um, the volume of S, because S is a disjoint union of the SV, is simply the sum of the volume of the SVs. 
Now, the volume of an SV is the volume of an SV translated by uh, any vector, right? Because that just means that I moved SV uh, to a different spot on the plane, right? So that volume S is also the sum of the volume of S sub V minus V. Now, notice that S sub V minus V uh, belongs to D0, and that's just because uh, you see that uh, S sub V belongs to V plus D0, so if you subtract by V, you fall back in D on D0. Now, assume by way of contradiction that the S sub V minus V are disjoint. So, what would that mean? Um, so, we have, because every S sub V minus V uh, is inside of D0, then their union is also inside of D0, okay? And if they were disjoint, then the volume, uh, the sum of those volumes of S sub V minus V would have to be less than D, uh, than the volume of D0, okay? And so that would make the volume of L greater than this sum here. However, the assumption was that the volume of S was strictly greater than the volume of the lattice, okay? So we cannot have uh, these two uh, conditions uh, 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 simultaneously, and that means that our original, uh, our hypothesis of the S sub V minus V of disjoint is just incorrect. So there must be an element in an intersection uh, of S sub V minus V and S sub W minus W for some V and W in L. Now grab an element in that intersection and define Z1 to be Z plus V and Z plus W respectively and subtract them. And what you get is Z1 minus Z2 is in L. And then of course, uh, Z1 is in uh, S and Z2 is in S as shown in the uh, uh, image here. So our uh, theorem is proved. Now, uh, so Minkowski's convex body theorem derives uh, directly from uh, uh, the statement here. So what it says is that if we have a lattice of dimension n, so a lattice of Rn of dimension n, and if S uh, is a subset of R to the n that is symmetric, convex, and a volume greater, strictly greater than 2 to the n times the volume of the lattice, then S must contain at least a non-zero lattice point. And so the goal really, uh, so now that we get to this Minkowski's theorem, the goal of, uh, of stating this uh, st uh, uh, theorem is that so that we can uh, progress towards a, an upper bound on the, 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 the minimum distance of a lattice. So uh, uh, here is our proof of uh, Minkowski's theorem. Uh, we first define S over two, which is all the X's such that two X is in S. And then, so the volume of S over two is two to the minus N volume of S, and is strictly greater than the volume of the lattice by assumption. Now by Blitzfeld's theorem, there are C1 and Z2 in S over two. So we apply it to S over two because its volume is greater than the volume of L, such that the difference C1 minus Z2 is a non-zero lattice point. Now by definition of S over two, 2z1 and 2z2 must be in S. Now, S being symmetric means that minus 2z2 has to be in S as well. And then uh, by convexity, uh, the elements on the line between 2z1 and 2z2 uh, are all in S. In particular, uh, the element uh, in between z1 and z2 has to be in S. And so, uh, so we have our proof here uh, that a, a lattice point, a non-zero lattice point, belongs to S. Now, how do we get from that to a bound on lambda of L, the minimum distance of the lattice? So, um, again, assume that we have a lattice of R to the N of dimension N. Now, uh, we get that the infinity norm, defined as the maximum of the absolute values of the entries of V, is less than the volume to the power one over n, and the, the direct consequence of that is that um, the Euclidean norm, which is the sum 
the square root of the sum of vi square is less than square root n times the volume to the one over n. So the proof of this, we take L to be the minimum of the v uh, of the infinity norms for v a non-zero lattice point, and we assume by way of contradiction that L is strictly greater than the volume of the lattice to the power one over n. So we define now the hypercube C, which is the uh, uh, all the x's in RDVN with uh, uh, integer, uh, uh, so with all coordinates less than L. Now the volume uh, of the hypercube is 2L times uh, 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 two, uh, two L to the N, which is two to the less than two to the N uh, times the volume of L. Uh, so uh, we apply uh, Minkowski's uh, convex body uh, theorem to the hypercube C, which also uh, uh, quite naturally is convex and symmetric. And that means that there is a non-zero lattice point in C, right? And so, um, the v, uh, so v belonging to C means that the infinity norm of uh, that vector v is strictly less than L. But by minim we had assumed that L was the minimum of all the infinity norms of la non-zero lattice points. So that contradicts the minimality of L. And that means that uh, that assumption was incorrect. So there are, so there is at least one uh, v uh, non-zero lattice points with infinity norm less than the volume of L to the one over N. And then uh, this uh, derives automatically from this bound because uh, the Euclidean norm of V is the sum of the, v, uh, the square root of the sum of the VI square. Now, uh, we finish this uh, lecture with the, uh, by introducing the concept of successive minima. So the lat uh, so we assume here that we have a, a lattice of dimension M and K less than M. So uh, lambda one is going to be uh, the minimum distance of the lattice, but we can define lambda K for K less than M. And we'll define this as the smallest R greater than zero, such that L contains at least K independent vectors of length at most R. Uh, one uh, important theorem uh, is that we'll finish by this is that uh, a lattice of dimension M has to satisfy that the product of the successive minima up to N to the power one over N is less than uh, a certain constant times the volume of one over N. And that constant is really important. It's the Herm Hermit's constant. And it's defined as the supremum over all lattices of this value. So lambda of the lattice divided by the volume to the one over n square. So that's a constant that only depends on n and it allows us to bound the product of the lambda i's by a function of the volume of the lattice. So this is, uh, th so this was our lecture on basic properties of Euclidean lattices on which we're going to uh, build our analysis of the security of LWE and ring LWE cryptosystems um, in the context of uh, lattice-based cryptography. Thank you for listening.